Hello and welcome to a let me bore you to sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. I'm laughing because as soon as I started talking, I must have woken Andre up because he's run out with his bag and he's just done a big poo. Right on the edge of the paper, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. There's about 20 pieces of paper, newspaper, on the floor. Spread about three wide, one, two, three lengths as well. And he does it right on the edge. Like, you know, near my table. He won't walk onto the paper and do it. But if I only put it at the edge of the of the you know, near the skirting board. <laughs> we'll do it on the carpet. He's just... Uh, you know, I go online and occasionally I'll look up ferrets and, you know, sort of what people have to say about them. And some people put down, uh, you know, these are the experts, that ferrets <laughs> are trainable. They're potty trainable. Toilet trainable. And... This little poo bag that I've got is the most untrainable item in my life, ever. It just does whatever the hell he wants, whenever he wants. And if anything, he's trained me. He does things that he's not supposed to do, like the ferrets traditionally aren't supposed to do you know I just I need to write a book how to how to do, how to deal with problem ferrets I could be the ferret whisperer mind you I don't know how to deal with him all I gotta do it's not a case of dealing with him it's a case of acceptance Impatience, and that's what it is, I think, with him. He's, I think, my my patience has increased because I've got this living being that I live with, and there's no point shouting at him, there's no point smacking him. Not that I want to do that anyway, but. And it's kind of, you know what? It's the same as a baby. The same as a child. Same as a human being. There's no point shouting at them. That stuff doesn't work. This is kind of... That's why I find it funny when I see people with dogs. And they get so angry. Because a dog is basically acting like a dog. They're a dog. And I think... I think people get, some people get a little bit, a little bit of a fantasy that dogs are supposed to, because I see stuff on telly where there's these dogs that are just so well trained and you can get them to do tricks and stuff like that. But the average dog ain't going to do that. And I bet you a lot of dogs, dog trainers and people that have dogs that do tricks, I bet you they get through dogs, they have dogs that don't, just refuse to do it. Sometimes. And apparently you can get ferrets to do tricks. The only command I can get him to do, and I do it in public sometimes, I'll say to him, can you do this, do this, and he ignores me. And that's what I said, that's why I say it's my command to him, Andre, ignore me. And he complies every time. Ignoring me is his favourite thing. But I don't want to spend the whole time moaning about him. I'm not moaning. He's he's not talking to me at the moment. Because I gave him a bath. Well, I didn't give him... I gave him a... It's like a bath, but I did it in a sink. 
because it's just easier. And but it meant I had to hold him the whole time. I didn't put him in the water, but he just absolutely hated every second of it. And after it, after I let him down because he was, you know, I dried him off as best I could. <laughs> and he got down and he was dragging his body across the floor. Literally, like just by with his front, with his feet, he was dragging himself across the floor. I think a mixture of drying himself off, but at the same time trying to get himself dirty again. Honestly, I think if there'd have been a big pile of horse manure in the corner, he'd have jumped head first into it and rolled around in it, laughing at me, sticking his middle finger up at me. It's, this is what he's like. But in the end, he's, I went sort of just to sort of calm him down a bit because, you know, he was a bit frantic and he was running away. He was running away from me like I was going to hurt him. He wouldn't go anywhere near me. I went to pick him up he, and he doesn't normally do that ever. And he was running, hiding from me. And in the end, up, I got managed to pick him up. His heart was going, he was shaking. It's like, I don't know how much of that was because he was a bit cold because he's, you know, his wet fur and that. But I gave him a massive cuddle and, you know, he still was shaking and shaking. And I gave him something to eat and he seemed a bit better after that. And I took him out for a walk. And he was he was happy again because he was able to rub in as much rubbish and crap and dirt as he could uh, manage. So he's uh, probably stinky and dirty again. Bless him. But he really, really <laughs> wasn't happy with me. Proper, you know. It's like I'd just done the worst possible thing. And that is for him, having a bath is the worst thing in the world for him. He's always hated it, always. This whole, whole time I've had him, absolutely hates baths. Yeah, if you go on YouTube and just put in ferrets having a bath, and they're just sitting there, or like standing there, maybe shaking a little bit, um, but they look like little rats because all the fur goes all the way down and they're so skinny when you take the fur off. If you was to shave a ferret, it would look, it wouldn't look like a ferret anymore. Mind you, if you shave anything, it doesn't look the same, does it? If you shaved a horse, well, a hairy horse, that is, or a bear. Yeah, a bear, that's a good example. If you've got a bear, and you obviously you'd have to gain its trust, um, but if you shaved a bear, like proper, you know, proper all the way over, <laughs> every part of it, it would look, it would look a bit like a chicken, like a really big chicken. I'm guessing. But that's kind of, uh, I would never shave him, although I'd, I've wondered, you know, what he'd look like if he was shaved. But, you know, I'd never do that, but I kind of want to now. <laughs> I want to shave him. It's all I want. It's all I can think about. But he seems happy now. He's, he's in his... Uh, his comfort blanket is that bag. He loves it in that bag. That's his favourite place to go. He doesn't realise that I bought that bag for him. It's my bag, not his. But uh, another thing he doesn't like is when I wash the bag. Because the bag gets proper smelly sometimes. You know, all the time. It just smells of him. But then there are occasions, like maybe, especially in the summer and that, 
gets a little bit pongy, so I wash it probably twice a year, and he gets so angry. He really gets angry with me. Proper, like... That's not that noise he makes when he's angry. It's uh, eventually he's okay, but it's because it doesn't have his smell anymore. And he wants it to have his smell. That's what he likes about it. So what I do is when I take him out with the bag for a long walk, and what he does, and he doesn't normally do this as much, but when the bag's clean, he'll keep getting in and out of the bag. So he's rubbing himself against a wall or in the mud or in a field or trees and plants and flowers, whatever, the grass and he keeps going in and out of his bag so we can put that smell into the bag and that's what he likes, it's all about smell with him he loves the smell he loves yeah it's, it's his sense, main sense is the smell so that's uh Anyway, I should say, what do I normally say? Oh yeah, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And um, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Of course, you may have already fallen asleep. Because we are 12 minutes in, but... Hopefully not. Well, hopefully yes, it doesn't matter. It's, uh... The thing is with sleeping... And I seem to have gone down the road of being some kind of a, not sleep expert, although I am pretty good at sleeping. It's one of my, one of my, my best things I'm able to do. Uh, farting and sleeping are the two things that I'm really good at. But... Yeah, I do. I, I can. You know, I do do other things as well. I do have other podcasts. It's just the sleep ones that are most popular. Out of everything I do, I've got about thirty-two podcasts, different ones for different things. And this let me bore you to sleep. The deep sleep whisper hypnosis, uh, which I try and do like one a day roughly each and that's deepsleepwhisper.com if you want to go to the website and see all the back catalogue I think there's 94 now on there uh, and the sleep hypnosis weekly dot com that's another one and there's 12 I think 11 or 12 uh, and they're every Friday there's a new recording and they're long they're about an hour each the deep sleep whisper ones are about 20 minutes ish sometimes longer sometimes they're 40 minutes sometimes they're 32 minutes you know it depends sometimes they're 11 minutes so they usually average about 20 20 minutes and I've also got two other podcasts. So that's three, four, two um, insomnia podcasts. So that's five altogether. They're my five most popular podcasts out of the 32. I've also got a seven days cure insomnia course. Uh, what other sleep ones have I got? I've got Sleep with Jason little kind of little course there's a what's the other one I've got um, I forget what it's called but it's sleeping with the sounds of sheep counting sheep to sleep that's it it's like counting sheep to sleep deeply or something like that and they vary in length between half an hour and two hours. So there's about six of them, I think. There's the sleep hypnosis with music as well. 
and there's six of those in that podcast. Um, yeah, so there's a few, but the five main ones are the ones that I mentioned at the beginning you know, of this paragraph, and they're all kind of in the running for being top of the of the charts, as it were. But at the moment, the Deep Sleep Whisper one and one of the Insomnia podcasts, I think it's Sleep. Um, I think it might just be called Sleep, uh, Sleep Deeply with Hypnosis. I think that's the podcast. And on that, I have everything. All the sleep stuff, including the sleep in the deep sleep whispers and the let me boy to sleep and all previous sleep sessions that I've made over the years uh, so that's like a variety but that you know so they're all kind of growing I think they're all yeah I think most of them are over the 30,000 mark of downloads in each podcast so they're growing some of them I get like two, three hundred downloads a day for, you know, each of them. Sometimes five or six hundred downloads, depending for what, I don't know. I can never really figure out why, really, where people are coming from. Uh, I do have the stats to look that up, but there's no, like, rhyme or reason as they say or as someone might have once said that I can't can't always figure it out since the weekends are possibly the quietest times and I think you know like holidays like Easter maybe don't know about Easter but Christmas definitely Christmas uh, New Year's Eve they're usually fairly quiet New Year's Day and then January you know everything sort of spikes up and uh, but I was looking at the stats and it was very last night I was looking at them and just kind of trying to figure out looking at each individual podcast the ones that are really popular or the most popular out of the ones I've got and they've all grown considerably over the last three months since March sort of like March, April, May they've really gone up the first part of the year they were a lot lower and you can see the the growth and you get the occasional day where I get a big spike and maybe sometimes like a thousand downloads just in one podcast and for no it doesn't you know it's no kind of can't figure out why that is sometimes so like four days ago I think it is five days ago I had nearly three and a half thousand downloads uh, for among the podcasts where an average day is just over 2,000. So it's kind of, it's growing. And, but when I get like a big spike like that, and I think, oh, is it going to start going up to 3,000? Which it will, but I, it might not be for a couple of months until it's at the 3,000, like daily and then it'll be 4,000, 5,000 and I need to get it to 100,000 that's when I can yeah, that's when I'll be I'm always happy, I'm happy or whatever it is really, to be fair the one thing that does give me some pleasure is when I get some feedback like oh, did you hear that? that's my television clicking it's been off for about half an hour I thought it would you know it wouldn't do any clicking now but 
It's weird. I can't complain. It was £150 for that telly. It's about 36 inches, so it's, a, it's an okay size. I got it on Amazon for £150. Uh, probably four years ago, or, yeah, roughly. So, it's not so bad really, is it? It okay, makes a few little clicks. Pings and pongs occasionally, but it's... Uh, it's doing its job. I like that little telly. It's not little. The room isn't really big and en- well, it is. It is big enough to have a bigger telly. But I don't really. If I did have a telly big, I suppose maybe 50 inches, 60, 70, and 70, maybe I think it's a bit too big. But if I, if I think I did if I have a telly, I'd want it to be. See, I don't know if I'd want the telly to be up on the wall. Because at the moment it's eye level um, when I'm sitting in a chair. And that's how I've always had my televisions. Always had them so I kind of look straight at them. Never looking up or down, but just straight, you know. I don't know if I'd like the idea of having a big telly that I was looking up at, you know, from the ceiling. Just, it would be weird. Would I get used to it? I don't know. It's like some people say, well, you know, you get used to anything. Which is, can be true to a degree. You know, I got used to eating or drinking tea with UHT, is that UHT milk? You know, like the not, like the long life milk, not fresh milk. And at first I bleh, didn't like it. And I made that sound when I was 26. So it was a, probably a weird thing to do, but eventually I got used to it. And it got to the point where... I preferred it that way. But I've worn leather trousers and I never got used to that. Very sticky. Very hard to get off. Not that easy to get on, but much more harder to get off. I mean, when I wore the leather trousers, I'd go out and I'd hope that I'd pull and, you know, find a lovely person to come home with me. Not to have sex, just to help me get my trousers off. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own. It was just like, that was so... I mean, that was when I was, like, really thin and fit and, you know, stretchy and all that. Now, I don't know what I would do. I'd probably just have to cut them off. i get to wear them once. So leather trousers... Another thing, really tight underwear. I don't know what the right word is for it, but since I've been, how old? Probably since I was 16 and I had a chance to choose what underwear I wore because, it's, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't, it wasn't a conversation, it was just... His, it was Christmas presents or birthday presents. Here you are, that's what you're wearing. I was like, thank you. I was like, yeah, brilliant. So when I got older, when I was 16, and I got to choose what I wore, I experimented. And bras are really itchy. And that bit of the back, 
and the, they just like they're so restricting, especially on your shoulders. I found that the strap would just dig into into my shoulders and stuff. Didn't like that. I have worn a bra. Of course, every everyone's worn a every man I reckon at some point has been sitting there and looked over at the the radiator and there's a bra drying and there's no one about and I thought hmm I know what I'm going to do I'm going to try that on not in a kind of a I wasn't getting any kind of thrills out of it. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, get your thrills where you can. But it was just out of interest. It's like, okay, what would this feel like? You know, so I think, well, I hope it's better than a tampon. That was a awkward experiment. But I just thought I'll try this. So I put the 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 bra on, and I was young at the time, and I had never seen like in the movies, a woman like you know I'm just talking movie movies, not anything uh, that you have to hide from public, but. They'd like put their arms, their, their their hands behind their backs, and unclasp the bra, and you know there would be music as well, wouldn't there? It would be like sensual music, and I thought well, I, I picked the bra up, and there was no music, and I thought this is weird. Surely there should be some music playing in the background, and I, I thought there must be a must be a play switch, something in you know in the bra. Just to play some sense or music, but nothing. And uh, so I put it on, you know, put it through the arms, through through my arms and stuff, upside down to start with. So I turned it around, and uh, I don't mean I put it through my leg, put my legs through, and put my arms through, but it was upside down. And then I kind of reached back to try and put it, and it just. It was getting caught in me, me hairs, and it was really awkward because I didn't realise then that that's not really how you know. Not everyone puts their bra on like that or takes it off like that. You basically just you can turn it round and undo it. It's it's you know taking bras on and off is not a sensual thing. It's just. It's no difference to just brushing your teeth or blowing your nose. It's just, it's not, it's just the thing that you do, isn't it? It's like, there's, there's nothing erotic about me when I put my underpants on. It's, it's hard to believe, but I do actually, I do have my own music that I play when I do it. But it's the can-can if you don't know if you've heard that tune sometimes a little bit of Bing Crosby as well and uh, I yeah so the bra very uncomfortable didn't like it didn't admittedly at the time I didn't really have anything to fill it with I do now I have a very healthy bosom and I could definitely fill maybe not a D cup but I reckon I could fill a B cup or C I reckon yeah there's definitely a nice a nice handful there well not a nice handful but a handful of fat really I suppose covered in skin and uh Anyway, after that, I must have left some hairs because no one caught me doing it. But I think, 
I must have like when I took it off I must have left some hair some chest hairs in it because after that um, my mum stopped leaving her underwear on the on the radio yeah. so and I decided I'm gonna get me own underpants I not, not <laughs> I wasn't wearing anybody else's underpants Luckily, and I, I do, I'm so grateful for this. Because when I was a kid, I had two older brothers. We passed down clothes. I got down, I got old clothes passed down to me for years, but never underwear, thankfully. Oh. It's like, oh, imagine that, oh, these... These brown underpants are lovely. Oh, oh, they were they were Paul's, and Paul says, "Well, I never had any brown underpants." No, they weren't brown to start with, were they, Paul? Eh, eh, eh. So yeah, I um, I bought. I don't know if it was in Marks and Spencers or it, I think it was, but I bought these underpants, but they were proper one you know they were like quite expensive ones not expensive now but back then probably you know well I thought it was expensive for underpants and I bought them and they were too tight and I'm not saying that it's not because I've been you know I'm a very lucky boy it's nothing like that it's uh I just felt con- re- constricted. I don't think everything needs to be squashed together. For me, that would be like wearing a bra with just one cup and squashing both of them into one. It's just that would be, I'm sure it would be very uncomfortable. Or having a jumper with just one arm where both your arms had to go into. You know, that's kind of how it kind of felt. Um, I've never had a jumper with one arm or wore a bra with one cup. I'm just saying that's how I imagine it might be. Um, And I didn't like it. But it seemed to go together with the 501 jeans that I used to have. Because it was all, everything kind of was supposed to, but not supposed to, but sort of to be in place, you know, to just, you know, your knees are there, your feet are there, and your your bulge is there, you know, it's, and I thought, what's wrong with just hanging loose, and I started doing that, I used to start wearing my jeans without any underwear, which has its own problems, so, you know, it's kind of, if you want to know why we wear underwear, try go a few days without wearing underwear then you realise why we need to wear underwear I think that kind of explains that one and uh, so if you meet someone and they say yeah I never wear underwear steer clear <laughs> so that's what I would say it's like okay, you never wear underwear so how often do you wash those trousers and those jeans oh once a week oh nice yeah, yeah, nice. Um, mm. So these these underpants were too tight, and then I discovered boxer shorts. Again, never had them when I was a kid. Never even heard of them. I've heard of boxers and I'd heard of shorts, but not boxer shorts. You know, individual things, and I thought they were just for boxers. You know, people that, not the dogs, but for uh, people that, uh, you know, the pugilists in the ring, boxing each other. I said, oh, I heard something really good the other day, last night. I was watching Deontay Wilder defend his WBC World Heavyweight Title. And he knocked out his opponent. And when he's been interviewed, 
he was uh, he said something that I've never ever heard a boxer say ever and he was sort of saying thank you and you know to you know to whatever for for the you know to the standard stuff and he said um, I'm just glad that my opponent is okay and we're both going home to our families because the head is not supposed to take punches and I thought wow and he's right our heads are not supposed to take punches it causes brain damage for everybody every time some you know it's I'm not talking about severe brain damage but it's getting hit in the head causes damage to the brain it's a scientifically proven fact um, but it just seemed weird that a boxer a professional person that does that for a living is aware of that yet still does it mind you to be fair he doesn't take that many punches he's the one that he knocks out most of his opponents so he's only taken a few hard punches ever you know in his prof- prof- in his professional career so I suppose he's got off a lot lighter than most boxers but it seemed a weird thing to hear a boxer say you kind of like wow in fact I might have actually said wow out loud but I didn't record myself so it's hard to know anyway back to the boxer shorts I bought some boxer shorts And it was like wearing jeans without any underwear, but without the complications. I thought, wow, that's brilliant. Because let's face it, I don't want to have to buy, you know, but one nice pair of jeans, 501s, even 30 odd years ago, they cost like £30. You know, they weren't cheap even then. And I couldn't afford to buy seven pairs for the week. So, yeah, I bought the boxer shorts. And ever since then, my entire adult life, I've worn boxer shorts. About time I bought some new ones, I suppose. But they're good, though. I've had boxer shorts in the past. I've had holes. I've worn them for so long that they've actually got holes at the side. In fact, I've got some. At the moment, I think I've got a hole. They wear out. I think it's the washing machine that does it more than me. I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm kind of like the Hulk. But the only part of me that gets angry is my buttocks. So it stretches because um, my buttocks get big and green and all angry and muscly and it stretches the uh, boxer shorts out of uh, out of their normal human shape so I just got a visual of that that was weird what a weird thing to say so since then I've had boxer shorts I've got through so many different pairs over the years. Had to chuck a few pairs out. What I find now is, is if I if once they wear out, like with socks, underwear, t-shirts, anything like that, once I stop wearing them, I chuck them on the floor, and Andre takes them. He loves that stuff. As it is, I chuck stuff on the floor in a pile. And he nicks, constantly nicking underwear and socks. And he does some weird things with them. 
and he goes through periods where he sleeps within the laundry, the dirty laundry. I know this is grim, it's horrible really, but he actually <laughs> sleeps. He crawls in between the, you know, not right underneath it all, but like in the middle of it all, or so you wouldn't even know he's there. Maybe you see his tail sticking out, or you see his little nose sticking out, or the, you know, and he'll go to sleep. And he goes through periods like that, like he'll be doing it every day for weeks and weeks, and then he'll go back to sleeping in his bag. And then I can't find him again, and he's asleep on my bed, and he's always on my bed asleep for weeks and weeks and weeks. Or he gets inside the quilt, and he's asleep there. He just has his little things where uh, he likes to, he finds somewhere like new that he likes to sleep and he sleeps there and that's his new, new place. And then he always goes back to the bag. But there's sometimes he goes weeks without even going near the bag. It's very, I can't figure him out, I really can't, which is quite, I quite like that because... Why would I want to figure him out? He's his own person. He's uh, this amazing little character. I'd like to get some decent socks. So I've had socks in the past that have been okay. But they never... I haven't had many pairs of socks that I've really enjoyed. Now it might sound like a silly thing to say because a lot of people may be listening to this and may say, yeah, but JJ, no one enjoys socks. But why not? Why can't we enjoy socks? What's wrong with enjoying socks? And I'm going to search. I am. I'm going to do a bit of research and I'm going to... That's one of the reasons why I'd like to, in the future, earn a living, which is a good living, you know, good financially living, financially, financially independent. So I can buy some really nice socks. And by that I mean go to London and go and get the get a nice expensive pair of socks that are just so comfortable that I'll wear them and I'll just oh I'll just be smiling. Make my f- Something to make my feet smile. That's it, isn't it? It's when you feel that, you know, when you feel in your body and you feel like a smile in that part of your body. You know, when you've eaten something really nice, but it's not just tasty, but it also it feels nice once you've eaten it. Because you know, some things that are tasty, they feel all heavy, don't they, in your tummy, and it's like, ooh, I have to sit down for. A few weeks to digest that, you know, like a snake or something. But with this, like a nice light meal, but lovely, tasty, just the right amount. And you just feel so, your tummy is smiling. Saying, thank you, daddy. Thanks for feeding me. That was lovely. And uh, he said, that's okay. And the tummy says, no, I'm not finished yet. I said, okay, what? He said, I just want to let you know that you don't have to wait for a long time before you do something physical. I said, what do you mean? Well, it was a light lunch. And sometimes, you know, when you do like sausage and mash and beans and... I just feel so... It's like it takes all the energy just to digest it and... 
I really recommend you don't do anything for a couple of hours. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that I feel quite energetic now. I don't think it's going to take all of the energy to digest that food. So, of course, don't go swimming or do anything silly like that until the food's digested. But um, you can, you know, you can go for a walk or carry on doing stuff. It's fine. You haven't got to sit down in a chair and you know, close your eyes or anything like that if you don't want to. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for your advice. I don't really need to be told what to do by my stomach. But, uh, yeah, thanks. I'll take that on board and uh, thanks for calling. I didn't really call, did I? I'm, I'm always here. I don't know why we don't talk more often. I've quite enjoyed this. Yeah, I wonder why we don't. Anyway, I want to go. You take care. You're not really going, are you? You're here. We're here. We're together. We're always here. You know. You know what I mean? We're always here. You're not going away from me, are you? No, I know. I know. It's just a saying. Just a saying. Anyway, uh, take care of yourself. Bye. Yeah, bye bye. Oh, okay. Bye. You know that feeling, it's like, oh, that was nice. That was lovely. Just what I needed. Even if it wasn't, but it just feels like, oh. I'm not sure why I was talking about food. Oh yes, yeah, smiley parts of your body. Yeah, I mean, I could go further with that. But, you know, sometimes, I think sometimes when, uh, sometimes when I've had a bit of a, an iffy, iffy tummy and, or trapped wind sometimes, you know, and I've, I've managed to let it go and I've just done a ginormous fart, but. I can just feel the the release of that and although I can't see it I know my my bum is smiling at me I know the it's a smiley bum it's like it's like it's happy everything's everything's okay now so it's good it's good to to have smiley parts of your body. Uh, I know it sounds a bit weird and silly, but actually there's something to that. It's like looking after the different parts of your body, maybe moisturising. Sometimes I'm, I do moisturise my face every day, and sometimes it feels nice, or having a bath, and just feels nice afterwards, just to feel clean. Like my whole body just has a little smile on it, like every part. And I used to feel a bit like that when I used to shave, because I don't shave really anymore. I've got a big beard now. Well, it's not huge, but it's pretty big. And sometimes I'd have a shave, and I just, although I don't like how I look when I shave, I don't. I don't feel a clean shaven face really suits my face. But sometimes it feels nice. It's like that smoothness. It's like, oh. It's the same as when I shave my head. And I haven't shaved it to the bone for a while. But when I do shave it, it just feels so nice. Especially when I do it with a razor. And it's like, oh, I keep touching it and like massaging the scalp. And when, when I do do it like that, I put moisturiser on it just because you can get a little bit dry after um, shaving. 
although generally any kind of dry skin would be taken off by the razor, but it's like the the feeling of putting that moisturizer into my scalp and massaging my scalp and it feels so nice and I can feel my scalp smiling it's a nice feeling I still massage my scalp even I'm doing it now actually I like to include the back of my neck yeah just that sense of relaxation it's nice a little bit of self massage is good that's why I wish I could reach my back and massage my back because I do especially my lower back I can reach my lower back but not it's not the same as someone else doing it you know it's it's, it's a little bit different, isn't it? With someone else, someone else's hands, it just feels different than when you're doing it with your own hand. It's. Uh, I suppose I could, I could do the old thing, you know, the old trick, couldn't I? I could just lay on my, lay on my right arm, until it goes numb, and then massage my lower back. So it feels like someone else is doing it, but <laughs> it's, it doesn't really work, you know, it's because you need to be able to feel with your fingertips, the, the muscles and especially like with the spine and the coccyx and all that area, because you massage either side of the spine, those muscles and then you need to be a little more gentle with certain parts and a bit more firmer with others so you need to be able to um, feel the pressure I suppose not feel the pressure as in um, you know as if you was an astronaut uh, entering the atmosphere of the planet uh, not that kind of pressure, but or doing an exam, but although exams don't have to be pressurous, they can be pressurous. They can be. So oh, I just invited, invented a new word. You know, some people are really finicky, and you just like that doesn't that word doesn't exist. Well, no words existed at some point. You just made that up. All words are made up. Did you not know that? It's all made up. What do you mean it's all made up? You know that makes sense. Yeah, it's all made up. Believe it or not, the world didn't start turning when you were born. You know, just because the language was there when you were born into the world, or I was born into the world although I was created I was created in a laboratory somewhere I think I was an experiment that went wrong but it's okay I've used my superpowers for good so it's okay my superpowers of boredom can you imagine if that was someone did that you know sort of uh, some kind of eugenic trial or whatever and let's uh, let's create the most boring person the world's ever known someone that you need someone that can talk non-stop eternally basically continuously coming out with absolute pointless stuff and never runs out of words that's a great time to have a pause isn't it <laughs> never runs out of words and then there's a big pause and then maybe they created me 
but I don't know what would I be a mix of. Because the thing is with these kind of uh, recordings is... You know, I wanted to read more stuff, read more books, but I don't think any books are boring. I don't think it's it's fair to call any book boring, because every book has its own audience. So I could read a book about mathematics, and it would bore a lot of people. Because of the subject. But at the same time. Mathematics is not a boring subject. And if it wasn't for mathematics. Our world would be a lot different. If it wasn't for mathematics. I wouldn't have this phone here. I wouldn't be doing this. Computers would never have been created. And computer programs and apps and mobile phones and all that stuff. So, and any book, any fiction, a book of fiction, that's someone's work. That's someone's life work sometimes. They might have written one book in their life and that was, that was the, the most important thing to them. So for me to pick that up and start reading it and tell, and under the bracket of, let me bore you to sleep. Seems disrespectful. To that person. But the idea is. Was kind of. How. I read the book. Because. You know you may be a. a big. Fan. Of. Uh, let's say Game of Thrones. Or Harry Potter. But I guarantee you, if I read that book out loud, you would not be on the edge of your seat thinking what's going to happen next. Pretty partly because you've already seen the films or the TV shows or read the books, but you know, you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an interesting read or an interesting listen rather. Perhaps. And it's a shame that there's so many books um, that I can't read because of copyright laws. And also because I could read, I could do a whole different podcast just reading books on subjects that I want to read. You know, there's a never-ending library of psychotherapy books that I want to read and have read a few, but so many that, you know, that would last me my life. There's a lifetime of books just on psychotherapy. There's a lifetime of books just on philosophy. There's a lifetime of books on hypnosis that would be impossible to read that many books they're just too many but wouldn't it be lovely to be able to just read them out loud so that I'm learning I'm getting to read what I want to read and at the same time I'm getting to bore people into sleeping But I'm kind of limited to really, really old books. And of course, you know, it's, it's not to say that, you know, the fact is that many of the best books ever written are really old books. You know, all the classic, that's what they call classics, isn't it? But it seems like it's a bit, as a, as a book buff, I used to be really into books. Like used to be, it used to be my main uh, sort of passion or definitely hobby. 
collecting books was my hobby for a long time and to you know to read a book really boringly a book that's really good and uh, is someone's life work you know what I mean it's something that someone's won a Pulitzer Prize or uh, you know some Booker Prize or you know a big author uh, just seems a little bit wrong a little bit cheeky you know a little bit cheeky and as you know any of you that have you know listened to me enough you know that the last thing I ever am is cheeky you know so I don't want to don't want, you know, I'm very, very serious all the time. Very important to be serious. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's me. It's my inner penguin. For some reason, I've managed to get through an hour. And I've literally said nothing. I couldn't even tell you what I've spoken about. Never mind. That's what mum once said to me. Jason. Wear your own underwear. See you next time. Bye bye.